Look, I get it. I was a believer too. I heard the promises and assertions you hear from pastors. I read what you've read in the Bible. I had experiences I thought could only be explained by a divine being interacting with me and the world. If you're not a Christian, this message still applies to you. Exchange the words pastor with rabbi or Bible with Quran or replace divine being with universe, whatever religion has your allegiance. I get it. I hear about war atrocities, about civilians dying agonizing deaths after months of the emotional torture of war. I hear about the long drawn out suffering of refugees or the trauma of victims of domestic violence and animal cruelty. I hear about environmental tragedies unfolding before us speedily but not quickly enough for most people to take notice and repair the damage. I have family who are sick, friends who face terrible hardships, and I face challenges of my own. There are so many things I'd like to change but have very little power over, so I understand prayer. When I was a believer in an interactive God, there were lots of reasons to pray, from simply expressing gratitude to earnestly asking for favors. But prayer to God turns out to be the same as the last few years I believed in and wrote to Santa. I asked Santa for world peace. One year it was the only thing I asked for. I never received that gift. And it all made sense when I realized Santa wasn't real. Of course someone who doesn't exist can't give you something, especially something as important and complicated as peace or an end to world hunger. The same goes for prayer to a god or gods. I understand the urge to close your eyes, throw your hands up and beg, to utter a stream of words from the heart, sharing your grief and frustration and desires to a partner more intimate than a lover, more trustworthy than a best friend, more powerful than an emperor, more pervasive than gravity. The desire to trust that not only are you deeply understood and perfectly cared for, but the whole world will be okay in the long run on some level, because this being with whom you can commune has enough love to hold the universe together and propel it toward the best possible outcome. I understand. I understand having your heart wrung about the plight of the world, for your fellow humans, for other species, wanting so badly to be able to affect change but not knowing how, other than uttering your desires fervently, privately, quietly, or maybe in a group if that's your style and religious cultural background. I understand. But I also understand how prayer kept me from authentically connecting with others. I trusted that those I loved would feel the power of my prayers, and even if they didn't, I'd get to express my love unendingly in the afterlife. And that was my own fault, for not following through in the only life we know we have to make sure those I cared about knew I cared about them, and how much, before it was too late. Prayer is dangerous. Prayer can encourage us not to act. It can encourage complacency. Prayer, if you engage in it, must be tethered to action. Action in the here and now, what you, if you're a believer, might call the physical realm. There's a saying attributed to several theologians, including Ignatius and Augustine, pray as if it's all up to God, then work as if it's all up to you. That's good advice because it's functionally the same as saying prayer doesn't work. Intercessory prayer, that is, the kind of prayer that is directed at a theistic, interactive God, a special pleading for a change in circumstances or a particular outcome. This kind of prayer is theologically inconsistent and empirically disproven. Intercessory prayer doesn't work. Check out these videos if you don't want to take my word for it, and you shouldn't take anyone's word for anything without corroborating evidence. Meditative prayer is different. Meditative prayer can be helpful in as much as it encourages calm reflection, reduces stress, and allows people to find personal peace and therefore to act effectively. So I'm not saying don't pray if that's what you already do, and I'm not explaining why intercessory prayer doesn't work. I'm saying act. Act in the here and now. Let your actions be your prayer if you feel the need to pray and worship. Stop mumbling alone in the dark in your mind and start changing the world people interact with. Yes, you need a way to make peace with that which you cannot change, but it shouldn't be by giving it up to a god in prayer 
or else you might miss an opportunity to change something you actually can change because you think it's all being handled by your divine superhero. So look, if you pray, I get it. I really, really do. If you pray because your heart breaks for others, I affirm your compassion. But don't let your compassion die at your lips. Do something about it. More than clasping your hands and talking to someone who may or may not be there and may or may not do anything about it, you must make the world a better place in whatever ways you can. For more thoughts on prayer, religion, and sometimes politics and pelicans, Find me on Twitter as Religious Fict and Tumblr as Religious Fiction One. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up, and more importantly, go make the world a better place. Psst. I want to give a more thorough shout out to these great YouTubers. Check out these videos about prayer 1.2 Deconversion Prayer by Evidence, Superstition by Qualia Soup, Does Prayer Work by Jacqueline Glenn. Prayer, The Body of Evidence, by The Body of Evidence. Prayer, What Does the Science Say, by Talk Nerdy to Me. And Is Prayer Actually Effective, by Second Thought. These videos deal with prayer in diverse ways, from theology to science to social implications. Check them out!